friends welcome to our academy's updates so we have a new FDA approval for s ketamine Spravato nasal spray and uh, this is actually the first monotherapy approved for treatment resistant depression so we all know most of the medications which are approved for treatment resistant depression are augmentation options right to antidepressants um, but this will be the first FDA approval as monotherapy and um, I will discuss this in these uh, uh, sections so I am Dr. Harvinder Singh creator of psychiatry education forum and before I start I just want to emphasize I have no disclosures I have no um, um, pharmaceutical company uh, conflict of interest um, and we will discuss this topic in the s FDA approval history what are the total indications when to avoid how to dose which clinical study was used uh, for this approval and what are the common adverse events seen with uh, Spravato s monotherapy so let's begin with the first one which is on January 21st 2025 Johnson and Johnson announced that FDA has approved Spravato s nasal spray for monotherapy in adults not for children's yet for adults as the first and only monotherapy for major depressive disorder primarily for patients who have inadequate response to at least two oral antidepressants now this is really important this is what the treatment resistant MDD diagnosis is at least two oral uh, different class antidepressant that's the key here now going at the Spravato s means FD approval history so this one is in 2025 as monotherapy but this FD approval began in 2019 when it was first approved as an adjunctive treatment for treatment resistant depression and one year later in 2020 this also uh, uh, received an expanded approval for depressive symptoms in adults again with MDD and suicidal thoughts or action so in total if you summarize this <coughs> sorry if you summarize these FDA approvals s Spravato nasal spray is currently approved for first um, in adults with treatment resistant depression as monotherapy or as an adjunct to oral antidepressant and this is also approved for depressive symptoms in adults with MDD with acute suicidal ideations or behavior and this is as an adjunct with an oral antidepressant but uh, the package insert very specifically mentioned that effectiveness in preventing suicide or reducing suicidal ideation or behavior has not been demonstrated so if a person need admission that should always be considered now this is an FDA approval now before we move forward let's very briefly discuss where we you should avoid this uh, treatment option which is the contraindications uh, so the major contraindication is patients with aneurysmal vascular disease including uh, thoracic or abdominal aorta uh, or intracranial and peripheral arterial vessel um, involvement and with patients with AV malformation arterial venous malformation it's primarily due to the uh, increase in blood pressure impact of this uh, medication which we will discuss in few minutes and then uh, patients with intracerebral hemorrhage or at risk factors avoid it and obviously if a patient is hypersensitive to s ketamine ketamine or any of the uh, contents now how will you dose this medication as a monotherapy the treatment guidelines are same as an adjunct so no major changes here but I will very quickly summarize this here 
So before even you start dosing, you need to measure the blood pressure and you should repeat that in 40 minutes. That's when the peak uh, in hypertension uh, can happen. And uh, pulse ox because of the risk of respiratory depression. And then a uh, very important instruction given uh, to patient is there should be no food intake for at least two hours before the dosing. And for liquids, 30 minutes. No liquids, 30 minutes before the dosing. And if your patient is on nasal corticosteroids or nasal decongestant, please avoid that for at least one hour before the dosing. I'm not going into the detail how to dose it, but uh, just uh, you can see the picture. Um, this is from the Johnson & Johnson. Um, this is the uh, 20, like every nasal spray is 28 milligram. And uh, after every spray, a patient should wait for at least five minutes before doing the next one because of uh, the absorption timeline. Now, let's start with induction. So you did all that, there is no risk factors, no contraindication, no blood pressure concerns, pulse ox is good. So first four weeks here, week one to week four, you start with 56 or 84 and it's twice a week initially. And you all know that the two hour observation after every dose is a requirement and it should be given by healthcare professional. So uh, that's why we have the REMS program for esketamine. I will not go into that. You all already know about that. Now, after the induction at week four, you can even can do the maintenance treatment, but the timing changes to once weekly for week eight. And after that, you can either continue once weekly or every two weekly, depending on how the patient is doing. But uh, it's really important to evaluate after four weeks to, to, to determine if there is any need for continuation of treatment. So this is a very basic overview of how to dose that. Now let's very briefly discuss which study was used uh, for this recent FDA approval for use of esketamine Spravato as monotherapy. And the study is uh, this one, NCT 04599855. This is a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled multicenter study. I will not go into the detail of study, but I will, I will just outline the brief overview. So the participants uh, were all uh, who met criteria for major depressive disorder per DSM-5, and they all have failed at least two different, now this is really important, right, two different antidepressants trial. And the mean age was 45, most were 61% were females, and most were white race, 86%. And uh, they were randomized in uh, one to one to two ratio. One was for 56 milligrams per watto, one was for 84, and then two were placebo. All were nasal sprays. And they were given twice daily dosing for four weeks, so this is a 28-day study. And this is a uh, brief overview of the results, and I got this from the package insert. You can go there and read more. This, uh, the top line is the placebo. The second, the triangle here is the 56 milligram, and the squ dark squares here is the 84 milligram spravado. And uh, here is the timeline, day two, day eight, day 15, day 22, day 28. So this is all one month trial. But you can even, before I go into the results, you can see how, um, the mean med RS, which is the depression rating scale, fell down. And this was actually even visible in day two, right? You can see here, day two, and this was statistically significant. Uh, very quick response, and they are um, even saying like same day, like very quick response seen with this, um, and it continued to decrease for day 28, as you can see and it was statistically significant with both the doses compared to placebo. Obviously more for 84, um, but obviously big difference with placebo and statistically significant based on p-value. And uh, as I mentioned, this was observed by day two and uh, approximately 24 hours, they say, and remained through day 28. 
Now, the last section is what were the common adverse events seen? And I will very quickly go over all of them, but uh, most of them are very similar to the other trials. The most common one, or before that, common adverse event is defined as incidence of at least five or more percent and at least more than twice of placebo. And the most common one was dissociation. And this include derealization, depersonalization, and even changes in the perceptual disturbance with disturbance or distortion of time and space and illusions. Uh, now, it was on the day of dosing and it was dose dependent. As the dose went up, the risk got higher. And this is one of the reason why that two hour observation in the clinic um, in a, in a health, by a healthcare professional is a requirement. And that's why REM's um, program came into picture as well. So this is the most common one, number one. Number two is the gastrointestinal side effect of nausea. And this again occurred on the same day of dosing, but it resolved in the same day in less than one hour with a medium duration. And it decreased over the time of the treatment. And the third one is the dizziness. And then fourth is headache. Fifth is anxiety. But this anxiety included terms like agitation, anticipatory anxiety, anxiety, fear, feeling jittery, irritability, nervousness, panic attack, and tension. So be mindful with your patients with comorbid anxiety disorders. And then six is feeling drunk, which goes with the sedation. And that's why driving should not be allowed. There should be a person who should accompany the patient for every uh, appointment. And then the second, the seventh one is the vomiting. So after nausea, that's the second gastrointestinal side effect. And then we have sedation, which I feel is very similar to feeling drunk or even dizzy with some patients. Now, this can cause sedation and even loss of consciousness, and it can cause reduction in the breathing. So respiratory depression is a concern, a serious concern. That is why, again, that two-hour observation is needed in the clinic or in the clinical setting with healthcare professional present. That's why pulse ox was needed, right? And initially, we talked about that. And oh, we already, so that's why that two-hour observation is needed. Now, the last is hypertension. Now, the blood pressure actually increased uh, approximately 40 minutes after uh, every administration of Spervato. That's why you need to repeat blood pressure after 40 minutes. But uh, it can last at least for four hours. That's why you need to use your clinical judgment. If you want to extend that two-hour period, observation period, you can do that if the blood pressure is not normalizing. But here is an important um, point they have mentioned that most of the side effect, like 99.6% of dissociation, 100% of hypertension, and 93% of sedation occurred and resolved on the same day of the dosing. Perfect. So friends, this was a very basic overview of this recent FDA approval for esketamine spravato nasal spray as the first monotherapy for adults with treatment resistant depression. I hope you found it beneficial. And uh, for our viewers who have, um, who have not subscribed to our academy yet, we have a full lecture series on major depressive disorder augmentation strategies. Uh, I know this medication is approved as monotherapy, but this is also approved as augmentation strategies. I have discussed 10 medications that can be used as an augmentation options where I have discussed research uh, backing up those um, um, strategies that you can use. I will post all the information below uh, in our blog post. So you can go to psychiatry education forum slash blog uh, dash post and you can read this post as well. But thanks again for listening to me. I hope you found it clinically relevant. Please post your comments. Please post your questions. How do you feel about this approval? Are you excited? Are you worried? Is, are there any concerns from your clinical experience? Please, let's share and let's learn from each other. 
But till then, you all take care. I will see you all in our next clinical discussion. Till then, you all take care. And bye for now. Thank you. Thank you.